Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of All the Year Round. This is a bit of a straddling one, I think, isn't it, Hayley? It's because we're doing like, this is sort of our January and February situation, but hello and welcome nonetheless. Yes, a slightly different uh, format today, as you can tell, because we've had to do this one online. Uh, various uh, life things came up that meant that we couldn't record in person, but um, hopefully this will work just as well. Yes. All right, so here we are, all the year round, a monthly podcast about seasonal things that happened within the Victorian period. So I am Dr. Emma Probert, and my research is on Jane Austen, Elizabeth Gaskell, and the novel of manners. For the astute amongst you, you may have noticed I'm using the title Doctor now, and it is because my corrections have all been signed off and I have my graduation, so officially a doctor. Congratulations, Emma. Thank you. And uh, as you may remember from previous episodes, um, I'm Dr. Hayley Flynn, and my research is on dreams in periodicals. Yes dreams so we've had our spooky episodes were very very dream heavy very dream and double there were dreams there was doubles there was lots of spooky stuff um and we are kind of still moving in that direction for this new year's episode so like i say we've sort of basically we landed on uploading this on lunar new year um we are actually recording on charles dickens birthday so it's the 7th of February now. So happy birthday, Charlie. Happy birthday. Also, uh, those eagle-eyed viewers on YouTube might remember that we had a, a, a Dickens birthday-themed picture in one of our very first episodes. <laughs> I did so go back that. and find that if you didn't notice. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You photoshopping his little party hat. On him. That was yeah. oh, that was great. That was great. <laughs> but we are starting this uh, New Year episode kind of late, in keeping with some Victorian beliefs about New Year, right? Absolutely. So we took a quote from uh, the All the Year Round Almanac from February, very fitting, uh, where they say that the New Year as we need hardly tell our readers, has even in modern times begun at other dates than the first day in January. Before the old was altered into new style, the legal year began in England on the 25th of March. So actually, we're early. <laughs> we are. I, I just had two very weird interconnecting thoughts. One, I feel like it's now that you've said it, it does feel kind of silly that we decide in like the absolute depth middle of winter that it's new. We should probably wait till things are actually new. And I also thought whether like the legal year beginning in like the 25th of March has anything to do with like the tax year. It is a lot closer, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Thoughts. I don't know. I don't Thoughts know. Thoughts emerging. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nor do I. It's also interesting for the Victorians that, uh, as we noticed when we were researching for the Christmas episode before, actually, that there are so many things that are the same um, between the Christmas celebration and the New Year celebration, like wassail uh, comes up for Christmas and New Year. Yes. As do really messed up Christmas cards and just cards, in, well, cards in general, because Valentine's is just around the corner and they also have some really messed up cards for that. That's true. Yeah. But do you want to see the first the first New Year's card that I have for you? Yes, I would love to. Here we go. The Victorians made the best uh, greetings cards. Best slash worst, depending on how you see this. So many dead robins. So our first Christmas, not our Christmas card, our first New Year card of 1890, where this dour woman has a pot that has soup. I don't know why this is a New Year's card. I don't know what this could possibly refer to. So earlier when we were like doing um, the setup for this episode, um, because I was just so focused on that child in blue about to be tossed into the pot, I did not realize so that- He's shocked, shocked and sane. 
you remember when I started laughing? So I was just like, I could not, I was just like giggling away to myself. I did not realize that there's two little legs already sticking out the pot. I was just like, yeah. that's what I just noticed. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so oh, it's just I wonder a whether <laughs> I wonder whether it's a fairy tale image. Maybe it's Hansel and Gretel. I I wonder that too. Um, and then I wonder what that had to do with the New Year's. But again, I'm I'm not up on my what is it Germanic <laughs> folk tales. And then I have just a lot of questions about this. This image, this woman seems incredibly bored, but then I just noticed her foot is partially on fire. There's just a lot of things yeah. happening. Yeah. An interesting, an interesting option for our very first uh, yeah. Happy New Year card. So yeah. here we go. Happy Sorry. New Year cannibalism. <laughs> I'm not- um sorry I started thinking about the Falcon expedition cannibalism that took place because they do, by the time we're getting to like the the late the late times that, that happened there's there's gonna have to be some cannibalism but they did originally actually have like a little Christmas cake planned like they, they'd like got provisions for Christmas cake originally which I think is very sweet um and at least there's so much alcohol and preservatives in that it probably would have been fine for a while um Anyway, back to back to New Year and, and not cannibalism in the Arctic, just for the moment. Um, so yeah, really, really strange cards. Absolutely the domain of Victorian times. You've seen weird Christmas cards, weird New Year's cards, and of course there's weird Valentine's cards. So first of all, thinking about resolutions, because that, that was sort of the theme that we landed on for this episode. We were going to do New Year resolutions, Victorian, and I guess sort of kind of focusing on the modern day as well to see if there's sort of a connection there. So when I was flicking through trying to find stuff about New Year's resolutions, I actually found out that Dickens, in all the year round, did do a segment on New Year's resolutions. So the origins of New Year's resolutions seems to have been medieval knights who renewed their pledge of chivalry, uh, the annual peacock vow, by placing their hand on a bird at the end of each year. And so Dickens writes, each made his vow to the bird, after which it was set upon a table to be divided amongst all present. And the skill of the carver consisted in the apportionment of a slice to every one, he explained. I'm now thinking, and it's very upsetting to think, I hope it's dead. Um, Because it does not specify. I know. (laughs) I imagine so. I imagine I, it will be. Yeah, it, it just seems like there's just a lot happening, but then I'm like, it's also a bit strange to just hold a dead bird and be like, I promise to be chivalrous. Um, <laughs> when you place your hand on it. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure I can envisage the um the situation where you make the promise before I, slicing I, up the peacock. I'm not sure I can either. More research might be required, but we're not medievalists, clearly, no. which is why if, we if have so many questions. Yeah, yeah if any tell medievalists us. are watching, yeah, please. <laughs> we, we would like have to. to... <laughs> I was going to say, we have to ask Katie. I mean, yeah. she, she does medieval and early modern things. I mean, predominantly French, but you know, we were quite close with the French during this period. So maybe I'll shoot her a quick message and we'll we'll learn some stuff. So. Um, resolutions tended to be about religious or spiritual devotion, but in the 17th century, it like increasingly becomes about self-improvement. So a Scottish writer, Anne Halkett, wrote in 1671, so slightly before our period, dietary entry on January the 2nd, a list of pledges taken from biblical verses, including phrasing like, I will not offend anymore. And the title page was resolutions. I like I will not offend anymore. I'm not sure that I could personally uh, bring myself to that one because I have a lot of questions about like, oh, I'm assuming for her it's like you won't offend God, but I feel like that's right. a bit of a tall yeah. order for an entire year because at one point that's not giving you a lot of wiggle room. That's not. No. I feel like maybe the specification that I will not intentionally offend <laughs> might yes. be slightly more realistic. Yes. Or I will make attempts not to offend anyone, something like that. 
<laughs> it's probably more what I would be in the market for personally. Mm. A bit extreme right now. I think so. I've added this in here because I just think it's fun. Uh, so again, this is not Victorian, as you'll note, because it's, again, the 2nd of January. I feel like, because we've just gone through Anne, who also was the 2nd of January. Is this something I'm not aware of? Is everybody doing 2nd of January resolutions? It's like day one for fun, and then day two, everyone's like, right, I'm going to sit down and think about the year. I have questions about Day that. one's for sleeping after the celebrations of the new year. That's a good point. That's a good point. This resolution here is actually Virginia Woolf's. But I liked it so much, I thought well, we should include it. So she writes, here are my resolutions for the next three months, the next lap of the year, another idea that I quite like, to have none, not be, not to be tired, to be free and kindly with myself, not goading it to parties, to sit rather privately reading in the studio, to make a good job of the waves, one of her novels, to stop irritation by the assurance that nothing is worth irritation, referring to Nelly, I have to say, I kind of want to embroider that on something. Yes. So, I like this as well. Sometimes to read, sometimes not to read. To go out, yes, but to stay home in spite of being asked. As for clothes, to buy good ones. Yeah, that's a good set of resolutions. I like it too. I like it too. Um, I was flicking through um, her entries at one point, and a lot of her resolutions actually seem to be tied to just, like, make a good, like, do good writing, just take care of myself a little bit. I like it. I do just like to stop irritation by the assurance that nothing is worth irritation. Yeah. Yeah, it's got big, there's a there's a line in Mary Poppins as well, where Mary Poppins basically says, um, go home because there's no use in worrying. And I was just yeah. like, it's a good point. It's a good point. There's very little use to worrying or being irritated a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. Although I suppose it's more like, getting the emotion out of you because sometimes the situation warrants it but not like dwelling on it I suppose yeah yeah that's a good one so I'm thinking about basically resolutions of the modern day so according to a YouGov survey only 31% of Britons who said that they made resolutions for 2023 actually kept them all uh, 16% of you guys, 2005, 2054 respondents still plan on making a new, year, new Year's resolution for 2024. The most common one is doing more exercise or improving physical fitness, 56%, while other popular resolutions include saving money at 49% and losing weight at 45%. Previous YouGov research from 2017 found that just six days into the new year, one in five people had already failed some of their resolutions. And I feel like that we should all aim for the spirit of Virginia Woolf because I can see how, like, you could fail your resolutions in the first week if you did something like, I'm going to go to the gym every day. Because then by day one, what would be the point of continuing? You've already done it wrong. I feel like we need to be Same. more intentional with res resolutions personally, but that's that's sort of my own little soapbox about just be nice to yourself. Just going to Virginia yeah. walk everybody. Just like, be kind to yourself this year. Are you going to be kind to yourself this year? Is that your intention? Be kind. Yeah. Read a bit. Don't read a bit. <laughs> Go out to parties when you want <laughs> to. Like Buy some nice clothes. Enjoy some, some nice writing or whatever work you do. I quite liked it. Um, so as well as this, I thought this would just be useful to shove in when I was reading around. And again, slightly outside our period, but there we go. Long 19th century it is. So in the 1904, um, well, that is interesting that I can't read my own handwriting. All I'm going to say is a periodical, because I cannot read it to save the life of me. Um... A it's a title that I found in the British Library newspapers, has a brief commentary on New Year's resolutions, which was, the sum of human experience seems to be that a very large percentage of New Year's resolutions are quickly broken, but that a good resolution kept for a time is better than nothing at all. And I think maybe people should also jot that down on the page of their yes. resolutions so that it's yeah. not like you failed after like the first six days of the new year because <laughs> that's not a good way to start the year I'm surprised by how few 
people actually said that they had planned to make a new resolution in 2024. I thought that would be higher. Me too. I mean, I'm not good at math, so I can't tell you what 16% is, but also I'm realizing. So if there's, okay, like, luckily, I don't think any statisticians watch us, and I would like to apologize for them <laughs> just in case they are. But if we assume that the 31% number at the top is of a similar amount to the 2054 respondents in the second sentence, then, oh God, okay. If there's 2,054 respondents and only 16% of them make New Year's resolutions, but then only 31% of those, so if that's like a third of 16%, so of that 16%, only, oh God, um, hang on, like 5% of people? who make new year's resolutions this year would actually do all their resolutions if i've done that maths correctly yeah yeah but i guess it would depend because it they would might... i'm making some yeah. some wild assumptions <laughs> but only to say that yeah apparently not that many people make resolutions i remember it being a, a big thing i remember at school they also made you do resolutions but i wonder whether like as a society maybe we're moving away from it i don't remember we didn't do that at my school lucky lucky we had to come up with 10 and after about two i'd just sit there and just be like i'm a child i'm in control of so little in my life i don't know <laughs> what to tell you oh yeah that's crazy no we definitely never did that uh, i think it's interesting that some people find that New Year's resolutions to be like really fun and motivating and other yeah. people find them to be just really stressful. And um, yeah, if you find them stressful, then there's really no point. You don't you really do not have to do it. Like it's a good idea to make good decisions for yourself, to want better things for yourself and uh, your self-care in the year to come. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you need to tie yourself down to yeah. specific promises and pressures i was reading um something by the gail ambassador for at the university of oxford um and she was kind of writing things around and kind of saying that you know i think people tend she was saying that she thinks people tend to be really big and bold with their new year's resolutions to just come off of like i think she said overeating oversleeping um, just overspending of Christmas and then you have this interim and then you're just like okay I'm gonna change everything about myself um, and I think that maybe if we collectively decided that we were instead going to do New Year's resolutions on like the 25th of March the old beginning of the new year maybe you'd be more inclined to I guess make some more reasonable resolutions instead of getting like caught up in the like I have to immediately change everything about myself after yeah. this huge indulgence maybe much more sensible although yeah. speaking of sensible things I did tell you very briefly but without details of the Victorian resolution game I came across yes um, which definitely wasn't sensible because the idea of the game was that you um at a party, so with multiple participants, everybody wrote down a resolution, essentially put them into a hat and then pulled them out. Um, and the, the resolutions weren't exactly um, serious. They could absolutely mm -hmm. just be ridiculous, funny, kind of nonsensical ones. So there's a book um, called The Book of Games by Mary White that explains how to play this game. And it has some examples of... Um, of things that you might put in the hat. So the, for the first day of January, 18, whatever the year is, I resolve to follow these rules for the coming year. You pull out your resolution and it might be something like, if I can't be honest, I'll be as honest as I can. Or I must walk with my right foot on the left side. Or I must stop smoking in my sleep. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, you pull out your resolution and that is your um your resolution for the year. You must stop smoking in your sleep. To be fair, 
I wonder if that ever helped somebody not burn down their own house. <laughs> that one might have had some positive resolution to it. If somebody did indeed smoke in their sleep, then yeah, maybe <laughs> maybe that helped them. I would hope so. I mean, I've, the again, I have some Victorian stuff here. So like, I do actually have a list of customs just before we move on to Rodgard Kipling. I do have some customs that I found, um, again, on my tour for resolutions, we found a few, but we also found some fun customs. So I found opening a Bible at a random page to tell your fortune. This practice was known as dipping. Yeah, um, I've heard of this one as a fortune telling practice. That seems like a terrifying thing to do because if, I don't know, maybe if you went New Testament instead of Old, if you just like mostly pulled from the like back of the book, you'd be all right. But there's too many scary things that you could yes. accidentally alight upon. So I think personally, I'd give that one a miss. Um, this seems to have been mostly popular in Europe and was even kind of became a sport very briefly in New York, which was gentlemen callers trying to call upon on New Year's Day as many of their female acquaintances as possible. So like you would have to like book everybody and they'd be like running across town. And like people seem to have like say like made a sport, like these men made a sport of like amongst themselves mm -hmm. about who could get the highest number. Um that seems like too much energy. Even just yes. from like was it, like opening the door, just being like, "Yes, cross me down on the list, Arthur, Arthur." We're all massively hungover. Just yeah, no, that's fine. No, send Daniel in in just a minute. It's just it's we're busy. We're busy, Arthur. We we all yes. you know. No, Alice is in bed. She's in bed. Just say, just say you saw her. I'm not. I'm not getting her up. I just. Oh my god, I cannot imagine. I love that song. I don't like it. I don't like it. It's, it's too much energy. Mm -hmm. I just want to open it. I'll be like, I'm not in. I'm not in. Um, the other custom that I found was Mrs. Bliss's New Year's pie. I think I may have heard of this too. <sighs> Although I can't remember what's in it. I remember that it was horrifying. <laughs> okay. Well, all I have to say is brace yourself. It doesn't have a promising start. It starts with a boiled cow's tongue mm -hmm. stuffed inside a chicken, which is stuffed inside a duck, which is stuffed inside a turkey, which is stuffed inside a goose, and then it's coated in a jelly of beef's feet. Yeah, that, that's too many things happening in that. It, no. <laughs> it's too many things. And can I also make the observation that as we... Okay, okay. Cow's tongue in a chicken. Fine. Fine. I mean, I personally not for me, but like proportionally yeah. fine. But like the difference between a chicken and a duck, how do you stuff a chicken into it? Because like then the birds are all of at least a vaguely like a chicken and a duck are fairly close in terms of size, and a turkey and a goose. So I, I have a lot of questions. Again, maybe we need to speak to somebody who's a historian of the kitchen because I have I have serious doubts about yeah, this do, Russian doll situation. I don't know how that was. Well, no, we do have a, a more um, modern thing to compare that to. I don't know whether you've seen around Christmas the uh, videos of turduckins. Yes. I hesitate to say I think is an American tradition. I think it is because so many American TV shows in their Christmas episodes reference turduckin. Yeah, exactly. So there must be a way to get the chicken and and turkey at least so I, probably the same I, kind of theory i mean it, it's kind of based on that but also like it's got two additional steps of a cow's tongue and a goose so i feel like just three three is challenge enough i think you could stop after yeah. that i don't think you need the tongue i don't think you need an additional bird yeah. and i definitely don't think you need jelly from beef higher, seed. higher level that's not that's just not that, that's my that's my final say on that. Um, okay, moving on to resolutions. I thought that you would enjoy a poem. Did you know that Rodney R. Kipling wrote a poem? Ah, 
think of a dad kidding poo. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of the stuff that um I actually found with resolutions was not like, you know, ladies' treasury kind of sincere. A lot of it was being a little bit like risque, kind of satirical. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah, cool. So I thought I'd start off with Kit playing. So it says, I resolve throughout the year to lay my visors on the shelf. A godly sober course to steer and love my neighbours as myself, excepting always two or three whom I detest as they hate me. I am resolved to flirt no more. It leads to strife and tribulation. Not that I used to flirt before, but as a bar against temptation. Here I accept, put out the names, perfectly platonic claims. I am resolved that vows like these, though lightly made, are hard to keep. Wherefore, I'll take them by degrees, lest my backslidings make me weak. One vow a year will see me through, and I'll begin with number two. Yeah, I brilliant. do just like that. I like the, here I accept, cut out the names. Yeah, I like I that too, like... as well as perfectly platonic flame. I, I just like it. And, and the um, accepting always two or three whom I detest as they hate me. And I'm like, I like it. Yeah. I like it. I think, yeah. oh. <laughs> That might, again, this might also have to be a craft project. I think that would be a nice thing to have around. Um, so instead of all the, like, permanent lists of resolutions up against your walls, just, like, have something nice and lighthearted. So, yeah, definitely. We're, we're still on satire. So <laughs> on the left, we have a portly gentleman who looks a little the worse for wear for... Um, what actually appears to be so much wine because there's not it's not as though there's um a, there's not even a plate there's not even an empty plate in front of this gentleman it says no, there, no. i will not eat so much next christmas yeah it would be italicized next christmas next. <laughs> so it's already too late yeah and in the right side picture we have a kind of um smaller receding man and a an imposing woman looking harshly upon him and he says i give in this time my love but next year i, I really must <laughs> with with all respect insist upon being master <laughs> yeah i love that they, um hmm. the illustrator here has gone for the kind of pantomime big head um yes style of illustration <laughs> I like yeah, that too. Make it but... <laughs> oh, I'm a big fan. I don't know why I'm, I'm always so focused on his little slippers. Oh, and his little ringing oh, yeah. hands. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's his very sad eyes, I think. Yeah. Oh. And here we have a man who seems to be... Oh, oh, no, this man is dead. I, just, I was like, oh, is he falling out the window? I just realised it says the monument um which if this is the same one thing was quite a tall monument in london which he appears to be falling off of um, yeah so i think dead. we are supposed to think that if you look kind of underneath his raised foot you can see the top of a church steeple so i guess he's supposed to be quite high up death death is coming for you this is very careless of me i'm positively determined to take more care of myself in the future in a very <laughs> short future sir and on the right yeah. we have um a constable and a very grim finger gunning robber um or criminal of some sort it says nothing on earth should prevent my turning over a new leaf after this and just on a little tag on his hat says for execution this side up oh no mm, I, it's not going well for help, you. but feel that he looks like he's doing a little dance <laughs> I know. all i got was <laughs> yeah um <laughs> but yeah so most of them seem to have there's like all these like cute little pictures of um just like humorous little like almost like punch style yeah very much so and i think it's definitely uh noticeable in all of them that there's this and it, even in the poem there's this note of like we all know that we're not going to keep these resolutions we're all aware we're all aware yeah. so i was thinking that you would also um enjoy these which was one new year's resolution how they were kept i'll never again go drunk to bed said mcfuddle 
Thus far, he has kept his word by regularly sleeping on the hall map with his head in the umbrella stand. <laughs> yeah, which very good. visually looks so painful in my head. <laughs> Um, and I thought that you'd also enjoy this. This one is, again, slightly out of time, just the one on the right there, which is um, from Punch. So a good resolution for the new year is to tell my news agent to send Punch home every week. In taking Punch, you will have the best humorous literature. There is nothing better the world wide over. The most striking cartoons, the cleverest black and white illustrations, the best jokes, and the most refined humor in prose and verse. These are all to be found in the entertaining pages of Punch. And it's a little bit sad because this advert was actually taken out in early 1914. So a lot of the people who may have put in their annual subscriptions would not be requiring them for long. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, that is a tragic twist. Have it really is. From Punch. Yeah. Yeah, not that maybe more newspapers should do that nowadays. Just be like, this would be it's just like you want to stay up with the news, don't you? Or like even magazines, just like have a little bit of joy in your life. Have your annual subscription to like a nice magazine that you like. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, sorry, it just reminded me of um do you know the song um Wear Sunscreen? Yeah. It's by like Baz Luhrmann and like it's it's basically a speech and the whole idea is that um it's like uh like the only i can't so like a, a lot of it is like a speech put to music in the background um and it reminded me of two things which was basically like wear sunscreen is like the only good advice i can give you because i've got scientific backing the rest of the advice that i'm going to give you in this long list of things is like basically like not scientifically proved and is of my own meandering experience and one of the last things uh, that it says in this this poem is, do not buy beauty magazines. They will only make you feel ugly. And I also <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah. Okie dokie. So that takes us to the very last part of my little slideshow. This card. Uh... It's a new, see, this is the kind of weird card I don't mind. Cats baking. Yeah. Cats, look at this cat on the right making biscuits. Like That's adorable. Yes. I love it. <laughs> like I love it. One. I'm into it. This is fine. This is a fine New Year's card. Although I will say the eyes of the cat that's looking at us do you feel a bit demonic. Maybe slightly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just making sure that wasn't just me. But yes, a happy new year to you. A happy new year to listeners we know it's a little bit late but I feel as though you know as long as it's before March you you can wish someone a happy new year because it's the first lap of the year is Absolutely. Virginia Woolf, right? yeah. yes <laughs> yeah so very very happy new year and we have a kind of um a resolution sort of of our yes own we have our own resolutions <laughs> yeah so for um for all year round this is obviously a bit of a different format and yes. we are going to be continuing with a different format this year. We have now come all the year round from when we began uh, this project last year. And we've had so much fun doing it. And we're really grateful to all the people that have watched and listened to it. Uh, because it's been really amazing, especially with the seeing some of the episodes that have, have done so well and had comments on them. And it's yeah. been lovely. That um, was lovely. But... Yeah, we're not yeah. stopping. No, <laughs> but no. we have other projects um, that we have been holding on to for a while that actually yes. were kind of born at the same time as all the year round, but took longer in planning um, without giving anything else away. So we are now poised to start that new project. And so we need all the year round to take a slightly different format this year. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So we have I say, lots more to come. So for all the year round, we did take stock of what people seem to engage with the most, what they seem to enjoy the most. Um, and what people seem to like was when we went on trips. So we had our little summer road trips, our expeditions to new places, um, going around, having those little adventures. People seem to like when we had guests on as well. So we had those sort of elements of like bringing in someone new to discuss 
um, like their areas of research. And people also seem to enjoy it when we like showcased authentic Victorian elements as well. So Haley, your your dream guides and your copies of all the year round and, and those sorts of things. So that's something that, that we've taken on board from viewership and engagement. Yeah, and also uh, we did we did notice some comments that kind of asked us to explain smaller details of things that we talked about, um, like what exactly was a pantomime when we talked about that in our Victorian seaside episode. So with those things in mind, uh, we've decided that for this year, we will still be going all the year round. There's still going to be seasonal seasonal episodes, but they will be once per season, one spring episode, one summer, one autumn, one winter. And for those, we'll be giving a, a bigger episode where we go on a road trip and we'll take you with us to see some exciting Victorian things. Yes. Would you like to uh, announce the first one, Emma? <laughs> Yes, so for our first one, we will be going, well, it's a Gaskell, another Gaskell related episode. Um, so we had quite a positive response for our first Gaskell episode. Yeah. And I have also been asked if I would give a talk to the Gaskell Society in April. So Hayley and I will be making our way over to Manchester so that I can give the talk, but so that we can also roam around Manchester walk in Elizabeth Gaskell's steps. We're still finalising the itinerary for that, but it, it's 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 coming down the pipeline. So that's something to get, get excited about. So with yeah. those sort of four road trips, that's going to be yeah. sort of like the big adventures that we have this year. Yeah. And alongside those, kind of addressing some of the smaller things that we've been asked along the way, and also some of the small things that never made it into our main videos this year, uh, we're going to be putting out a small video every week or a short, uh, just yes. bringing some interesting Victorian things uh, that we haven't gotten to talk about yet. Yes, because if you didn't know, Hayley and I actually live in different cities. So getting together in order to record together is not always the easiest for us. So we have, we're going to use this so that we can spend some like solid quality time together, quality research time together when we're sort of going on our expeditions, but also making sure that we can more easily create very, very regular content. So we've already mapped out the first couple of months of shorts and smaller videos that we're going to make. We're very excited. Uh, I'm very excited. Yeah, I was about to say that. I'm also very excited for this. It's um, We don't want to give too much away, but the plans look exciting. And as for that other project, which we're well, I think we'll keep secret for now, but you yeah, should yeah. be hearing about it quite soon. Um, we're also very excited to start that. Yeah, I'm I'm really psyched about that one. That one is just it's a it's a big old research project, that one. Um yeah. Yeah, that one that one's extended. So yeah. don't don't it. you you <laughs> won't be in suspense for long and the second you're not in suspense, just just know that it's not gonna be a flash in the pan, it's a long end. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So that's kind of our uh, New Year resolution for this project and projects to come this year. So yeah, we we hope that you are going to join us for some of those. As you said, we're really grateful for you watching and listening in 2023. So yeah, hopefully you'll be as excited as we are to see what's to come. And um, yeah, happy new year. Happy New Year! Thank you so much for listening, everybody, and for watching, and um, just for everything. We hope that you had just just the best 2023, and we hope that you know this lunar new year and moving forward into spring. We hope that the first lap of your year is going well, and that you know you're looking forward to everything that is is coming your way from us. 